with Sienna Spotlight. It's a little bit different than the main Search It Up with Sienna series because the discussions and interviews I will be having are shorter and much more random. But we're still gonna be talking about really cool things related to TV, movies, books, and pop culture. On today's episode, I'm gonna be talking with author Rob Bouillet, who wrote the Mr. Terrapt book series, which includes Because of Mr. Terrapt, Mr. Terrapt Falls Again, Saving Mr. Terrapt, and his just released book, Goodbye Mr. Terrapt. He is also the author of the series that includes The Perfect Score, The Perfect Secret, and The Perfect Star. Before he became a full-time writer, he was a school teacher and a wrestling coach. And now, without further ado, here's my interview with Rob Bouillet. You were originally a teacher. How did you get into teaching? Oh, my wife told me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's not too far from the truth, Sienna. Um, so I was... Um, I was in college, um, and while in college, I was um, I was wrestling, and um, I still had athletic eligibility with wrestling, and I had finished my undergraduate degree, which is in biology, and um, my wife was the one that was um, aware of the the education program, um, and so I started working on that while I was still at school and um, fell in love with it. So, um, you know, it's not that she made me do it, but she certainly um, kind of pointed me in that direction, I guess, knew it would, could be a good fit, and it was. So anyway, that, that's kind of how I, I found teaching, I guess. That's so interesting. And you, what made you want to be a writer? So that didn't happen until I became the teacher. When I ended up in the classroom, surrounded by these fun, high-energy kids, that's that's what when it happened. That was the inspiration. So I I dedicate that first book of mine because of Mr. Terrapp to my former students. It's because of them I started writing. And so at first, Sienna, I started writing so I could be a better teacher of writing. I was just writing two or three page stories that I would take in and share with my students to use as examples to to examples of what you could do as a writer and storyteller but more than that really just to build excitement around around writing and um, well what happened is in order for me the teacher to keep writing stories to share with my students all of a sudden I had, had to get busy thinking about stories more and more and so I often call that the writing switch you know a light switch you can flip on and off I think people you have in your head what I think of as a writing switch most likely, um, you know, as a student, you turn it on in writing, you turn it off when writing's over. But what was different for me, I never turn it off. Every day, I go through life thinking like a writer, paying attention to what's going on around me. And when you're doing that, ideas come to you many times um, when you least expect it, many times in your head when you're far away from the desk. That's when some of the best stuff happens. Um, and so, uh, thanks to my students, I turned that switch on, and then there was a day when I got hit by an idea when I wasn't expecting it, and uh, that idea took off on me, and it started me on the journey of, of wanting to write a book. And um, how did you come up with the idea of Mr. Turret? Well, the kids, that's what came to me first. These seven kids that um, make up the gang in the Mr. Terrap series, they came to me at a time when I wasn't expecting it. Um, and they came to me telling me about the first day of school. That's how the idea hit me. I had the boy who was all about goofing off, the kid who loved school, the kid who hated, hated school, the new girl, the mean girl, they all came to me. Um, I never had more than seven, never had less than seven. It was always those seven. And of course, as they were telling me about the first day of school, part of that involves this new teacher, Mr. Terrapt. And so that's kind of how the idea first hit me and how the idea was was born um, and I started writing it, taking, you know, taking time, pretending to be each of those kids, writing about the first day, wondering about the second day, the second week, October, November, December. And, and that kind of helped me to come up with ideas and continue to, to write the story. I always knew from the get go that I had this really special teacher, um, a teacher that was gonna have a great relationship with the, with the students. So I think um, Sienna, in the end, um, you know, having been a teacher for many years, I've been left with all sorts of wonderful school memories uh, of projects, of uh, unexpected twists and turns, and all sorts of crazy things that happen along the way. And those experiences really helped me 
well, help me with every book that I've that I've written, and certainly help to inspire the Mr. Terrib series. Each of the characters, all of the seven kids in the Mr. Terrib series, they each have their own distinct little personality. And even on the first book, it says it on the back. It says like Luke, the brain. Like it says it on the back, so you can see the personalities before you even read the book. Can you talk about each of those seven characters and what made you decide their personalities? You know, I I'm fortunate. I get a lot of fan mail. I receive a lot of fan mail from from teachers, students, um, kids in classrooms, and it's always makes me chuckle that um, so many of the letters say, "Hey, Mr. B, did you know you wrote a book about our classroom or my classroom? I'm so and so, and this kid is that character, and I'm this one." And and um, I think Sienna just um, you know that makes sense to me because. Um, the characters seem so real because you are able to connect and relate to them. So I think that um, I just ended up writing about what I saw in my classroom um, every year. I, these characters were in my classroom every single year. And when it came to creating characters, that's what I do. I take bits and pieces of all sorts of different people I've met, all sorts of different people. There's always bits and pieces of me and then imagination. And I glue all of that stuff together. So um, bits and pieces of former students really helped me when creating these characters. I had loads of Peters in my classrooms over the years and lots of Lexis and Lukes and Jessicas and the rest of them. So so that's what really helped me to get going with um, those personalities. So, I mean, there there's, there's kids that I could think of that um, – behaved like Lexi from time to time, dressed like her, um, other, other students, talked like her, you know, other, other kids. So there's all sorts of bits and pieces. And I can think of kids that I went to school with, friends and not friends. And so all those little different pieces helped. Um, and then, like I said, me and, and imagination. And do you have um, a character that you think you most relate to? Uh, I always joke and say Lexi when I'm asked that question because <laughs> um, it's not Lexi, but um, um, it depends on which part of my life. So I can tell you when I was a boy, my mother wouldn't hesitate to tell you I was Peter. Um, and and what's funny, Sienna, is if you ask my wife today, she'd probably still say I was Peter. <laughs> but um, so, so I'm a little bit like Peter, let's say that. But um, I was also a lot like Luke, serious about school. I worked hard. I did well. I wasn't anything like Jessica as a kid, excited about reading and writing, no way. Um, that didn't happen until I started teaching, until I became that teacher. Um, so depending on which part of my life, I guess I have a, maybe a little bit of a different answer. But the one that I certainly think I connect with in the most meaningful way is Danielle. Um, and that's because growing up, my grandmother lived right next door to me. Of all the, all the people I've had in my life, she was one of the most important. So that personal important piece for my life really helped me with her character and her story yeah I think I most relate to Jessica just because I mean, I love to read and write I love that it's like my favorite subject English I love reading I love writing like little things um so that's definitely I feel like I relate most to Jessica yeah I could have predicted that Jessica would be doing the spotlight podcast for sure so not not Peter I could tell you that <laughs> And the one of the things that I really love also about this series is that each of the characters has their positive moments and their negative moments. They each have something that they're struggling with in each book. So um, what made you um, decide to, like, what made you decide to do Danielle and have her have diabetes? Um, so... Uh... Oh, I like that you've asked this question. So one of the things that, you know, I think a lot about with when, when I'm getting ready to tackle a story is um, conflict and what sorts of challenges and struggles can I create for the characters? Because that's what makes the story more exciting. And, and um, it also gives my reader a lot to think about and ponder and talk about, which is important to me. I, that's, I want that in my stories. Um, and so, you know, I, I get into thinking about that. Um, I ask my character lots of questions. What What is it that you want, that you're hoping for, worried about, scared of? Those sorts of questions help me to come up with backstories and continue to create challenges and struggles. Um, so in the case of the one you specifically asked about, um, that's a um, 
connection with my oldest daughter. So my, my oldest daughter is a type one diabetic and um, that happened when she was eight years old. And so that was um, going on before I started um, um, Saving Mr. Tariff, the third book, which is when that enters the story. Um, so again, that's just a life experience. That's a, that's a pretty big thing to go, to go through um, as an individual, but also your family's involved in that. So, yeah. so that was something I wanted to, to, to be able to write about. And it gave me more to do with, with Danielle's character. And um, yeah, so that, that's, that's where that one came from. One of my, I have so many favorite things about this book, but one thing that I love that other books do too is how you wrote the format of the book, how each chapter is like a different perspective of each character. Why do you want to do in that format? Um, so I guess there's two parts to answering this question. Part one is what I had mentioned earlier. That's how the idea came to me. It came to me with the seven kids telling me about the first day of school. So it's like I had these multiple voices. In fact, the title I gave the story when I first started it was Voices from the Classroom. Um, so that's how the idea hit me, and that's how I started writing it. And once I started writing it that way, Sienna, I had a lot of fun. I really... I really got into it. I was excited. It was fun to pretend to be each of those kids. And the more I did, the more I started to see what I could do as a storyteller, where some characters know something that maybe others don't. And you could do some cool things with that. I started sharing it with my writing group, and they really loved it and encouraged me to keep going. So that's part of the answer. Now, the other thing goes back to me as a reader. And some of the most important advice I could give to you as a young writer is that nobody but a reader becomes a writer. Yeah. You've got to read, read, read. The reading is what will help you grow as a writer and storyteller more than anything else will. And so I bring this up because there's a different book. The title's Bat Six. The author's Virginia Woolf. I listened to the audio book of Bat Six many years before even thinking of this Mr. Terrap story. But that that book is written with multiple characters going back and forth telling you about a uh, sixth grade school year. And had I never listened to that audiobook or had that reading experience, I really don't know if the idea would have come to me the way that it did. So I think that just my experience as a reader were important in, in shaping that too. And what is your process in writing the book? Uh, I guess if I had to pick one word to describe my process, it's messy. Um, <laughs> I do not have everything figured out when I start, I have scenes, characters, I have enough that I'm really excited and I can't wait. And so I get busy, I get busy writing. Um, I guess I should back up and just mention again, the idea of always busy thinking like a writer. So there's a lot of in the head stuff that happens. You get some ideas, I collect them, I write them down, but some of those ideas go away and others, continue to come back, Sienna. They won't leave you alone. And the ones that keep coming back and kind of tugging at me, those are the ones that I, I know I have to pay more attention to. And those are the ones that I'm going to end up wanting to, to start writing. Um, so there's a lot of that initially. And then, okay, so it's time to start writing. Um, you know, the, the thinking and planning continues. I have enough that I'm excited. I get busy writing. And as I write, I I get new ideas. That's probably how I get ideas more than any other is by I get in, I get busy writing. And as I write, I get new ideas. I learn more about the character, more about the story and things come to me and all that, all that messiness that happens while doing the work. That's what I use when I can go back and revise and rewrite, which is by far most of my work is the revising by far. How long does it take you to write one book? So now um, I'm fortunate. I'm working as a, a full-time, full-time writer. I've, you know, that's my, my job. So um, the last several books I've been able to do, it takes me about a year to a year and a half um, to, to pump out the book. <laughs> so that's about the pacing I'm on now. And do you have a favorite genre to read? Realistic fiction. Mm -hmm. The stuff that I'm writing, which I think makes sense. That's my favorite, Dale. <laughs> and if you weren't a writer... Um, what would you like to do? Probably be a country music singing star. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I don't think my family would agree with you that I could pull it off, but I would try. <laughs>
And have you ever thought of making a Mr. Terrap, a Mr. Terrap movie? <laughs> so, Sienna, I was wondering if you would ask that question. Um, I obviously I get that question all the time. Um, pretty much every single time I talk with readers, I'm asked about the movie. <laughs> so, um, Sienna, I've I've had. Um, interest from movie people, um, you know, companies, agents, producers. I've heard from multiple people over the years and continue to hear. Um, and readers, like I said, are always asking. So am I interested? I'm, I'm always thinking about it because readers are always asking. So um, I think it would make a great movie for a lot of reasons. And I would be excited about that. Conversations um, I don't, you know, maybe they're still happening. I, I don't know. I have no, no control over it. So um, I know the more people that get excited about Mr. Terrup, the more books I sell, the better the chances. And, and now that there's a fourth book out there, maybe, maybe that'll reignite things. But um, if you know anybody that's doing movie stuff, be sure to tell them about Mr. Terrup. You can tell them, and maybe you could be Jessica. You, so, so there you go. We're going to have to have a casting call. <laughs> yeah. And um, what do you, so I know that this is kind of like the last book of By Mr. Tarot, which I just, I finished in like a day because I loved it so much. Um, but I know that's kind of like the last book, but like kind of, do you have any other plans for like a, another book or do you think now you think that's the end of the series? You mean plans for a fifth Mr. Tarot book? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Sienna, um, so the book's only been out for a week, right? And I've already had people emailing me, asking me for number five, and you're kind of wondering the same thing. So um, here's what I could tell you. I wrote book one. I didn't know if there'd be book two. Mm -hmm. I wrote book two, and I thought that was it. And then guess what? I wrote book three, and I definitely thought that was the end of the road when I wrote, when I wrote book three. Now I've written book four, and I think that it's probably it, but I've said that before. So um, will there be a fifth one? I don't know yet. We'll see what happens. Time time will tell. It's exciting to have readers continuing to, to ask. So um, I'm going to have to think about it a, a little bit more and see how I might be able to tackle a fifth one and what the angle might be. And are there any writers that you look up to? Oh, lots. So right now, Sienna, I'm reading a book by Gary Schmidt. Um, the title is Pay Attention, Carter Jones. And I just think it's absolutely fantastic. I've, I, it's just fantastic. And I've read other books by him that I think are fantastic too. So he's, he's um, one, one author that comes to mind right away. One of my very favorites is Leslie Connor. Um, her writing is, is absolutely beautiful. It is just flat out beautiful. Um, every book she's written. And so she's one. Um, I really love Christopher Paul Curtis's stuff. Um, I'm, I'm really love, uh, well, uh, um, you read Goodbye, Mr. Terrapton, you know, I tackled poetry with Jessica's voice. And so I mentioned Elizabeth Azevedo and Kwame Alexander, love their stuff. Um, so so there, there's some other writers. And one writer who um, passed away a few years ago, but was a big inspiration for me, um, was Richard Peck. So he too, I thought was just fantastic. And you also have um, another book series called um, The Perfect Score. Um, yes. You started writing that after Mr. Terrapt, right? I started writing The Perfect Score after I finished book three in the Mr. Terrapt series, Saving Mr. Terrapt. Um, so, are, are, have you read the Perfect Score series, Sienna? I actually haven't yet. You're, you should, because all of my Mr. Tariff fans have, have really loved it. Some like it more. I have a strong feeling um, you're going to like Natalie Kurtzman. She's going to rub you the wrong way uh, right away, because she's, well, she's Miss Perfect, and she knows it. She's very opinionated, um, and she doesn't have – much patience or tolerance. So I don't think that that's um, you at all, but you got to spend time with her as the series progresses and you'll see why I said that. In the third book, they they have a um, 
a t like a TV show that they that they put together, um, the Razzle Dazzle show. And so I guess I'm thinking of Natalie Kurtzman's role on that and and what you're doing with your spotlight. Anyway, I just think you would really you'd like the it's a new cast of characters, multiple voices back and forth, and um, I I know you you're gonna like it a lot, so you should check it out. Eat it, yeah. And like you're saying about Natalie, um, not to say character's name, she sounds in the beginning like what you're just telling me, like Lexi a little bit. <laughs> you will make a lot of connections between the Mr. Terrapt characters and the Perfect Score characters. None of them are the same. They've all got unique stories, but yeah. Lexi will remind you of, or Natalie Kurtzman will remind you of Lexi. There's a character, Scott. He's the one that's going to make you laugh all the time. He's going to make you think of Peter. But again, they're a, a bit different. Um, and then, you know, you'll make connections with the rest of them, too. Well, I can't wait to read it. And I want to thank you so much um, for doing this. I had so much fun talking to you, and I learned so much. And Mr. Tear Up series is just my favorite. I love it so much. Well, thanks, Sienna. Thanks for reaching out to me and bringing me on your show. You're doing some really terrific work here. So it's been fun to hang out with you and and chat with you about reading and writing. So spread the word about Mr. Terrapt. We'll see if we get it to the big screen. And uh, have, a, have a great holiday season and lots of happy reading to you. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much, Mr. Bouye. I had so much fun talking to you and learned a bunch. I hope you guys did too. His books are amazing. If you haven't read them, check them out. See you next time on Spotlight.